Immorality, anti-Semitism, and replacement theology have rendered much of Christianity as unbiblical, mystic, and on the road to extinction. Welcome to the Heartland Connection, where we equip Christians to walk in the truth of God's Word, to support the land and people of Israel, and to stand boldly in their Abrahamic faith. I have personally learned so much about God and His Word from our Jewish friends here in Israel. I'm honored to have my good Orthodox Jewish friend joining me here on the program every week. Rabbi Yonadav Zar will be sharing great insights into the Torah from a Jewish perspective. <clears throat> Welcome, Rabbi Yonadav Zar. Shalom. All right, so I'm really excited about this week's Torah portion. Today's portion is Parashat Vayechi, I think. How, how do you say it, Rabbi Yonadav? Vayechi. Vayechi. Okay. Vayechi. I think that's about as close as I can get. <laughs> All right, very good. And which that's means, great. and he lived, right? Vayechi. Um, so, in this week's Torah portion, we read about how Yaakov, Jacob, uh, asks Joseph if he will make sure and not bury him in the land of Egypt, but to take his body and bury it back in the cave of Machpelah, where his fathers were buried. And then at the end of the portion, we also have Yosef. Joseph asks but please take my bones and bury them uh, back in the land of Israel. And so our question for today, Rabbi Onadav, is why was that so important? Um, you know, if they're there in the land of Egypt and they, and they died there, why couldn't they be buried there? Why was it so important that they would have to make that journey carrying the body and those, and, and, uh, of, of the patriarchs back up to be buried in the land of Israel at the cave of Machpelah, and then Joseph buried right here where we are in Shechem? Why was that so important for them? We have to remember we were in the uh, beginning of our being as people, the Israelites. And it was very uh, danger and very easy to lose our vision, to lose our role, and to lose ourselves in Egypt. And, and Yaakov wanted to make really a strong connection, to strengthen the connection of his sons and his descendants to the Holy Land, because only in the Holy Land we can fulfill our vision, to fulfill our role, to fix the world and to bring the blessed to all the world, to all the nations. So we have to be very, very connected to the Holy Land. The, the way, of course, is the tradition of the, uh, the tradition of the covenants that God made with the forefathers. And also, Yaakov strength it with the uh, ask to bury him in the Holy Land. So all the sons took his bones and brought them back to the Holy Land to bury them. Mm -hmm. And like that, also Yosef. He, he, he asked the people to make oath to bring back the bones to the Holy Land. Mm -hmm. And it strengthens the connection. And also we have beautiful Midrash that Yaakov told his brothers, you took my body from the Holy Land, please hmm. bring him back hmm. to the Holy Land. Hmm. Yes, a, a complete the 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 re repentance. Hmm. You oh. you stole me from the Holy Land. Please bring me bring me back there. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow, that's that's a beautiful picture. And to know later on in the story, that's exactly what they do. They bring him back and bury him just just over the hill here, just over the mountain right here 
in 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 Shechem in Shechem, and uh, yeah, I think yeah, it's so it's such a foreign idea, especially I think for Christians and for people from outside of Israel to think about why a certain particular piece of land would be important. But we see it so clear here in the Bible that. You know, when God called Avraham, when he called Abraham, he said, you have to go to a, sp- a specific land that I'm going to show you, uh, which obviously is right here in Israel. And then when Israel's uh, in, in Egypt, later on we'll be studying about that, about the Exodus. Um, and it's just so significant that even though Egypt was totally uh, conquered, right, got all the plagues, all these things that happened there uh, in the land of Egypt, it, it could have made sense for the people of Israel to say, hey, Egypt's conquered, why don't we just make a, make a, rebuild it here, we're already right here, the Egyptians are, basically could be our slaves now, uh, but even then, they had to go to a land that wasn't conquered yet, here to the land of Israel, and, and come back to the land that God had promised in order to fulfill their mission of bringing redemption to the world. And so I think it's really something important and that maybe is a little bit of a foreign concept for Christians to realize how important this, ver- this specific geographical location is to God and that, that He chose it. He chose it for a very specific purpose. He chose the Jewish people for a very specific purpose. And when those two things come together is when we start to see redemption happening and great things happening in the world. So I think that's a very important thing to notice in the scripture. We we can uh, dig deepest here in this point Mm -hmm. because it's something little complicated. On one hand, our vision is for all the world, for all the nations. Mm -hmm. So naturally we can think, okay, if the vision is, is for all the world, for all the nations, we can spread, we can be everywhere because it fits everywhere. It's proper for everywhere. But on the other hand, we, we have to focus. Mm-hmm. Our vision comes from the idea that God is one. So the unity of God is, a, is discovered in one place, one land, not only one land, one city, one mount, mm-hmm. one house of God. So to, to, to fulfill our worldwide uh, vision, we have to focus in one place. Just if we focus in one place, we can fulfill our vision for all the world. Mm-hmm. It's also a message to the one person to the private person. If you want to fulfill your skills, your powers, you have to focus. Mm -hmm. If Mm -hmm. you are a a spread your powers, you can fulfill them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a very, very good lesson. We have, to, we have to recognize our big mission, but also recognize our little piece in that and, and what, what we, we have to be able to strengthen ourselves and what we, how uh, we can bring that, that strength and, and blessing to us in order to be a blessing to, to other people. I think that's a really, yeah, very, very, very powerful lesson, uh, which kind of leads us into the next thing, because then we have here with our next question is about uh, blessing and uh, specifically blessing our sons. Here we have in this week's portion, Joseph's bringing his two sons uh, to uh, Jacob and asking him to, to, to bless them. And then uh, in the next chapter, we have Jacob blessing all of his sons and, and, and speaking the things over them. And so I wanted to ask, uh-oh, looks like we're, we lost Rabbi Onadav. Here we are, we're calling on Zoom, so let's see if we can bring him back up here. Uh, maybe it was our internet. Let's see. It looks like we're connected. Oh, there we go. Okay. Oh, we lost yeah, you yeah. there. Can you hear me now? 
Okay. Yes, yes. Okay, great. Um, so maybe I'll repeat that last that last question again. Okay. Um, great. All right. So our next question is is because we have this this uh, very beautiful picture here of um, Joseph Joseph bringing his sons to Jacob and uh, asking him to bless his sons, and then in the following chapter we have. Uh, Jacob coming in and blessing all of his sons and speaking into their lives, speaking what will happen uh, into the future. And so my question for you, um, Rabbi Yonadav, is um, should we also bless our sons? And, and should we, how do we speak into people's lives? Like, it seems like a very, very powerful thing that's happening here for a father to speak uh, into his son's life. So what can, you, what can you teach us about this? Should, should we also bless our sons? What can we learn from this in the Torah portion? Okay. In, in the bless, you have two sides. One side is the um, the mystic side. Mm-hmm. You bless one, and God send His bless to this man. So, if you bless your sons, you um, direct to them the bless of God. Mm-hmm. But there is another side. The bless is not only a, a is, you are you as a blessed man. You are not only passive mm-hmm. in this bless. It's like it's like a role vision. Mm-hmm. When I bless my son. I tell him, my son, you have role, you have vision, you have to fulfill it. Mm -hmm. You have to fulfill your bless. It's not only God will send his bless to you. Mm -hmm. It's also you will understand your vision, your role, and you will work to fulfill this, this bless. Hmm. We can talk again about the, uh, the prophecy, it's like bless. The nation, the nations will be blessed. They will help, they will support Israel and will be blessed. You can read it as a bless and you can read it as a mission. I have to fulfill this mission. Mm -hmm. So when Yaakov blessed his grandsons and later his sons, he gives them missions. Mm -hmm. This is your powers. This, those are your powers, are your skills. You have to fulfill them. You have to be focused and you have to try achieve your bless Mm -hmm. put it as a mission of your life so it's all about education do you want blessing to your sons bless them educate them focus them on their missions Mm -hmm. Mm Yeah, I think that's a very, very powerful thing because I think it's, it's, yeah, it's basically like, like prophecy. It's like speaking into their lives, saying this is, this is your, your mission. And I think maybe sometimes that, that, like you said, it gets a little mystic or something. We feel like, oh, but I, I don't know what the future is going to be, so how do I bless them? But maybe it's not that complicated. Maybe you can just say, I bless you to live a godly life, to follow righteousness, to uh, fulfill your calling, to, you know, there's, there's things that you can prophesy and speak and educate and, 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 and bless your children to do um, that doesn't have to be so specific like you're trying to foretell the future or be a prophet. We're not, we're not prophets, but we can, we can encourage and speak things into our children. I know that's what I've felt uh, now as a father, being able to speak those encouraging words. And uh, more than that, that's what I learned from, from my dad, uh, from my father. Um, when we first started uh, trying to figure out what Shabbat was all about, uh, that's one of the first things we heard is that, oh, on Friday night, 
It's a very special time for fathers to bless and speak things to their children. And so dad started doing that. So every Friday night, he would put his hand on our head and, you know, and bless us. Uh, maybe if he noticed something special that we did that week, he would pray for us and, and, and bless us that we had fulfilled something special or, or that we would do something, you know, and follow God in the future. And I would say that was a really significant thing for me uh, to be able to have that uh, blessing in my father's uh, blessing to, to in, in the way that he saw that I should go. And um, that was a really big thing for me uh, growing up. So something that I think I can uh, thank you guys, the Jewish people, for, for keeping these traditions that are so meaningful and a very big blessing, uh, have been a b- big blessing to me. Okay, so our last question here. Um, we have in our Torah portion the story of Israel, uh, Yaakov, uh, passing away, being gathered to his fathers. Um, and we see that Yaakov's sons mourn after their father's death. And it seems like even the Egyptians are mourning. Uh, there's a great mourning that's happening here. Um, and I wanted to ask you, Rabbi Ondov, because it seems like um, it's, it seems like it's a very important thing uh, to be able to mourn uh, over lost uh, relatives and, and to have this part of culture. But it seems like in today's culture, mourning is looked at as sort of a weakness. And it seems like uh, there's kind of this question, oh, should, can, I, can I let my feelings go? And I think it's definitely more of a Western culture thing than an, is, than an Israeli thing. I think Israelis are more, more expressive and are able to do that better. Uh, but I think especially for Amer- Americans, um, you know, you, there's this feeling like you have to prove yourself or show that you're tough and that you're not weak. And so you don't actually um, mourn when, you sh- when it's healthy to mourn and it's the right thing to do. Um, so I don't know. Those are some of the things that I've seen and felt. But Rabbi Anadav, um, what do you think? Is it, is it important for us to mourn? And if it is, how, how should we do that? Okay. Okay. Uh- First of all, all this subject of mourning is based on uh, customs. Mm -hmm. It's not a strong law. Mm -hmm. So everyone can find the exact ways he wants to mourn. Mm -hmm. But I want to say more. The, the secular culture is denying any significance of the spirit of the holiness mm. and of course of the life than itself, because mm-hmm. it's only uh, the blood who flows in the body and stuff flows. Mm-hmm. It's only the heart beat and stuff beat. It's nothing. It's it's any. It's it's all about physical uh, elements. Mm-hmm. Nothing with spiritual. There is no soul. Mm-hmm. There is no God. <laughs> to according to their culture, their faith. Right. <laughs> so, so, what's the significance of death? Nothing. Mm. There was body. It's like animal. There was body. He was alive, and now he's dead, and that all. Oh, there is no significance. But we believe that there is holiness. There is soul that God gave. Mm-hmm. gave. And the, after the death, the soul is going back uh, to the sky, to the heaven. And there is significance to the life. Mm-hmm. And there is significance to the death. Mm-hmm. So we must mourn about the life that uh, left us and mm-hmm. we must find the significance of the life that w- were and the death that now and the life that 
uh, stayed here and we have to continue. Mm -hmm. So the moon allow us to, to find the significance, to find the way to continue the life to find the powers to continue and to find the mission to continue. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's something very deep in, in our, in any, any faith, any faith. Mm -hmm. the, it's not secret that when someone meet death, their religious feelings are awakening in mm. him. Mm -hmm. Because it's exactly the point of the connect connection between the man and God when his soul mm -hmm. is going back to God that gave it. So, so we have our customs of mourning. Mm -hmm. We sit seven days on the, on the ground and talking only about the dead. And uh, if we, uh, we, we accept visitors that come to comfort mm -hmm. and to talk about the dead and sometimes to teach to what memory of the dead. Mm. And we sit in the house of the dead. So we collect gathering all the family together to sit in the same place. And it, gives powers to to the life to the live to to the family that stay alive mm -hmm. to continue mm -hmm. yeah i know i've i've uh, been able to go and, and sit with some people here in israel who are who are taking that seven days to to sit and to and to mourn and it's definitely a very, very special, special time to go and sit with them and, and hear the stories about this, the, the person's life and what he was able to accomplish. And it's a really very, very special time. And I know for me, when my grandfather uh, passed away, um, I think we've, we've learned a lot from the Jewish people since then, but this, this was a little while ago. Um, and it was really hard for me, obviously. I was very close to my grandfather and uh, he was very, very, very special to me. He got very sick, and then when he passed away, um, there was kind of, there was a lot, of, obviously, a lot of different emotions that I was feeling, but part of it is, is I feel like, okay, I, I acknowledge that, he, yes, there's very something very significant with his soul, but there was almost this feeling like, well, he's in a better place now. He's with God, so I should uh, rejoice that, that he's in a better place, but I think maybe the thing that I've learned from the Jewish people that I think if, if, if I, you know, and now that I'm working through it still, kind of, um, I realize I need to actually take time to be sad that he's not here. Even though maybe he's in a better place, I'm still here, and I need to be able to carry on his, um, you know, the, all the good things that he brought into the world and some of that vision and things. Um, but I think it was, I think looking back at it now, I should have not only been happy that he was able to, you know, uh, you know, leave this world and no longer suffering and those kind of things and be with God. But also for me, I needed to take more time to be, to, to remember what all he did, which we did some of that, uh, but just to grieve, I think. I didn't really focus on the, the point of I needed to take time to really think that through and, and what life was going to be like without him and what my responsibilities are now that he's gone, um, some of that kind of stuff. So I think it's, it's been really good for me to learn more uh, from you guys, from the Jewish people, about yeah, t taking intentional time to think it through and to process and to be sad that he's no longer here, um, and that you know, I guess going back to the beginning with the Garden of Eden, uh, death wasn't supposed to be part of the way you know God made things work here, um, and so grieving that we have to do that, that it has to be part of of, of life, uh, even though we believe in the the 
the eternal, the, the world to come, uh, we still don't have him here with us. And that's very hard and something that you should grieve and work through and process. Um, so I think that that's been something I've been able to learn a lot from the Jewish people and your customs and, and traditions and based off of a lot of these scriptures, um, has been a real blessing to me in learning more about that. All right. We just got a few mi- minutes left here. Rabbi Ondav, do you have anything else you'd like to share before we, before we wrap it up? Maybe, maybe we have to remind that the death, it seemed to be the stable um, situation in our world. Hmm. You live very short time, but you are not live all the rest of the time. Mm-hmm. But the truth is that life this is a stable situation and we hope the day that there is no death Mm -hmm. because God is the origin of life Mm -hmm. and the death is only because of the sin Mm -hmm. and without the sins there is no necessity need Mm -hmm. in the death Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. we we have to keep working keep repenting until we we arrive the day Mm -hmm. that we don't need the death again Mm. wow yeah Um, amen that's really really good all right well thank you rabbi onadav really appreciate you studying i always enjoy studying together with you on here Um, and thank you to everyone who's listening who's been able to stay with us here and learn from Rabbi Onadav, we appreciate you guys jumping on. If you've learned something today, please share this with your friends and with your family. Um, you can do hit the like button, subscribe, all those things really help us to get the word out. So if you guys can do that, that would be great. Also, send us feedback if you have questions or, or anything for upcoming uh, Torah portions or something you heard today that you want to